Hello again. You welcome to the Microsoft Access Database tutorial for this week. My name is Akko Smila. This tutorial is brought to you by Datatex and Datatex is here. We do our possible best to upload videos each week teaching you how to get the best out of Microsoft Excel and then Microsoft Access. This particular tutorial is for Microsoft Access. If you've not subscribed to the channel, kindly hit the subscribe button, turn on the little bell notification so that you wouldn't miss any of the videos that will be uploaded. So in today's tutorial, we are going to talk about how to split our Microsoft Access database application or system. So how do you split your Microsoft Access database and why do you necessarily have to even split your database system? So that is what we'll be talking about in this particular uh, tutorial. Let us get into it. So splitting your Microsoft Access database is uh, actually a requirement uh, it is expected or it's a demand if you are about sharing your application on a local network. You know, Microsoft Access is uh, designed to be a desktop database system or desktop database management system, meaning that the databases that you develop with Microsoft Access will be stationed, cannot be shared online. But however, there is a way for you to share it with you, several users. That is by using the local area network LAN setup that you may have in your business or your corporation. If you are about sharing your application, it is required of you to first split it into two files. You split it into the backend file and the frontend file. The backend file is going to contain only the tables. Frontend file will contain everything with the exception of tables. So at the end of the day, this is what we do. You place a backend file in your network shared drive. So, for instance, if I have a backend file, you can go to your computer. You see, you have a network drive here, but because I currently don't have a network setup, so you just have to go to your network folder. You place it in there, whereby everyone on the local area network. So, you see, this computer is not connected to any network, like I said earlier on. So, you place it in here. The backend will be placed in your network drive. Then once you're done with that, you just move, you, make, you ensure that uh, every person on the network will have access to the backend. But then they shouldn't be having the right to delete. Okay. Now when you're done, then you can. So when we are done, we we'll having two files, front end and the uh, back end. So we, without no wasting much time, let us actually get into the tutorial. So we are going to use our post database new here as an I mean as, as an example. So, for instance, we are done with this post system and we really want to I mean, put it on a supermarket uh, network so that all the several hundred salespersons they are having will be able to assess it at the same time. We don't want to share the entire file because that is not a helpful way and then uh, a professional way of sharing an asset database. If you, there are a lot of replications involved in you sharing the entire database system with the both the backend and everything included on your network drive there are lots of disadvantages you may have slow speed the software can easily get corrupted at any time so the easiest way of sharing your file with server user without you now having any issue is to split it so let us jump into it and see how to split the database system so i will just double click and hold my shift key to escape to this application backend because we are going to learn how to split it now because basically we'll be creating splitting means we are going to create front end and the back end so now let us do this quick so i will first create a blank database system before we do anything now there's an easier way of doing this automatically in microsoft assets but then i just want you to understand so i'm going to take my time and take you through the manual way at the end of the day at the end of the video getting to the end i also explain to you how to do it automatically and i believe you're going to love it so guys let us move on all right so now let's create our backend file so we go to new microsoft assets now i say pos i'll say backend so i'll say backend okay so pos backend here so now before you do anything create a backup copy of this so I'll create a backup copy. It's always advisable that I create a backup copy and I'll put this backup copy right in here. We are not going to use that in case anything happens, we have it out there. Okay, so now we just come back to uh, our post system. So this is the original post system that we have. So have it open, then you go to the, you launch the post backend file that we just created as well. 
So mind you, this port backend doesn't contain anything and we're just going to copy and paste the tables out here. When we finish, we delete it from the source. Okay, so now right in here, this is what we do. You From the original port system or the original database, you copy all the tables. Uh, all the tables to be placed in the backend file because the backend houses only tables. So now that we are here, we have everything copied. Okay, so now I will copy. Uh, then once I come in here, I will choose to paste. So now if you are pasting, there are these options out there that I have to pay very critical attention to. Are you, paste, are you pasting only the structure only or you would like to get both structure and data? So as far as uh, we want to share this database, if it is a blank database, if it doesn't have any tables inside, you can choose to go for the first one. But this time we have data and we want everyone on the system, everyone on the network to have access to the data on their front-end application. So we choose the second option. Now we hit OK. So the second one, so you hit OK for all of them. OK, so now you can see it is populating out here. OK. All right, so now guys, successfully we've been able to uh, create our backend file. So now we go back to the front end. Now the tables over here, we would not need them in the front end. So we click here, delete. Now it deletes all of them. So you respond yes to all the messages that will come. Okay, so now you can see that we don't have any table, or we don't have any tables in this particular uh, uh, password file because that's so this one is what we call the front end the front end doesn't contain tables it contains every object with the exception of table now now we have the back end file also over here successfully okay so now let us close everything here okay so now it means that we can actually right click here and rename this one to pause front end so you can see fe signifying front end okay so this time around if you launch this application so let me launch the front end and uh illustrate an anomaly to you guys that can only be corrected when you do a linking so okay so for instance if you go to manager and you click here now you see you are getting errors yes because this particular file front end database here it is not connected to any database source or a backend source so the tables cannot be found so now you can see that there's an error because there is nothing in here because if not connected meaning that we have to link the front end to the back end okay so now on each client or salesperson's computer you go and put only the front end on their computers so the advantage is that should in case something happens to their computer it will only affect the front end file that they have and it will never affect the back end that we have and mind you the most important aspect of your database is the back end because that is where your data is actually stored the front end can easily be replaced by the developers at any point in time so now that final phase is for you to link this back end file to your front end file over here so now like i said uh, if you're about doing it originally you just have to go to your file explorer make sure that you put the back end on your network drive here okay so for instance now i'm just going to assume my network drive uh, so let's copy this so i'll copy the back end then now i'll open my file explorer so let me come to documents so we have a lot of items here okay so now let's say for instance i want to keep my i want to keep my back end in a download folder so i'm keep i'm using the download folder as my network drive okay so now it means that i don't need it here so now i will distribute all the front end the front end to all the salesperson on, on each salesperson's computer this is how we do the linkage you open your front end file so you open your front end file now you come to external data import group you choose access okay so now if you are importing the data uh, if you are importing um, records into access there are some these two important options that you have to what select one so if you either choose the first one which is this what uh, ordinary import importation 
and then the second one so you choose the second option which is linked to the data source by creating a link table if you choose this you wouldn't actually what uh, be successful so you choose the second option because you want to create a linkage now you click browse okay so now you locate where the backend file is stored so if it was a network drive you will click here and you locate it but then we we are using the download folder as our network drive so i'll select pause backend then i'll hit open okay so now that you're here you hit okay all right so you can see that all the tables uh, that we have in the backend file uh, have been shown you here so you select you click here to select everything now you hit okay okay so with uh, within few minutes okay so now we are actually successful so you can see that the tables have been imported over here and there is also an arrow here signifying that a connection has actually been built to the record source that we have in the network drive or in this case our download folder so now we are done for the first salesperson so we move on to do the same repeat the same task for the other salesperson as well so now we are done so irrespective of where the backend file is now the salesperson once you launch your post db so let's launch it and see whether the error will come again okay so now we go to manager and as soon as we click here now you can see that the files are here we can have access to them so once you go back so salesperson so for instance let me log in as myself and now you'll be able to each client computer will be able to read records from the back end so that is the beauty of database splitting so now here when you go to customers you can see the informations are here so if you input information here so for instance new customer let me input uh so let me input sanda sanda adiza one of a, a female friend of mine telephone there. so now for instance we've actually uh, managed to add one record so standard is a new customer now let's see because it's on a network uh, if we should go to the back end we should see Sanders information so it means that whatever records uh, that each client's computer or salesperson will enter on the uh, computer or in their system it will actually be what it will come into the back end automatically or it can be found in the back end as soon as they are done so now if you go to the back end now let's see the data that sanda entered on the net on her in her front end so customers customers tv so now you can see that wow so that record that uh, uh, the sales person the first sales person entered over here you could see this here so if you have 100 users on the network and they are all entering data as soon as the database admin comes to the back end he will have access to all of them and by that you can even choose to encrypt this particular file we'll be making another video going forward uh, teaching you how to do encryption in microsoft assets but then make sure that each front end compute each front end will have i mean the front end security that is the login pages okay so now like i like i promised you how do you then do this blatant thing automatically how do you do it automatically so now if you want to do it automatically this is how to go about it it's very simple uh because we've already done it so we wouldn't actually uh, go through 100 percent now mm -hmm. you come to access database here in database to so what's up so you click access database now you click split and once you click split uh the database will automatically be splitted for you and the back end file will also be created it's very easy so you will need to actually check it out because i've already done it so i wouldn't like to actually mess things up here you click split database you'll be asked to choose where you want to store the back end now the back end file will be stored for you without any kind of stresses or uh, hard work so guys thank you very much for watching this particular video if you had loved it kindly hit the subscribe button subscribe if you're a newbie and stay so that each time that we upload a microsoft assets video you will get notification so that you don't miss any of it we have important and amazing tips to be shared uh, so we just have to stay tuned and be with data tips. thank you for watching see you in the next video bye